Hey guys, Terry Roberts here, your Midmo LO with Bell Bank Mortgage again. I want to talk about uh, the same difference between a higher interest rate in a buyer's market as a lower interest rate in a seller's market. All of this is based on demand, right? So in a seller's market, you're going to have a multiple offer, multiple bid situation which means you go to make an offer on a home, say the home asking price is $285,000. And if it's an extreme seller's market, that means there's more demand for homes than there is home inventory availability. So when that happens, if they're asking 285,000 and then there's 30 people making an offer on that home, the bid's naturally gonna go up to where it could potentially sell for 300,000. That's in a, in a seller's market and the interest rates are a little bit lower, which is why the demand for housing is so high because the interest rates are low. If you flip that upside down to a buyer's market, it's a buyer's market, so the buyer has a little bit more negotiating power because the demand for the homes is not as high. The demand for the homes is not as high typically because the interest rates are higher. Fewer people are out and less motivated to purchase a home. The biggest difference, one of the biggest differences between a buyer's market and a seller's market is in a seller's market, the seller is much less likely to cover the closing costs for the buyer. In a buyer's market, the buyer is much more likely to get the seller to cover some or all of their closing costs. Typical closing costs are going to be somewhere between 2 and 4% of the purchase price depending on the area that you're buying in. So with all of that said, check out this comparison. In a seller's market where they're not going to cover any closing costs, let's use the scenario of a $300,000 home and the closing costs are, let's just take the middle, let's just say 2.4% are the closing costs. On a $300,000 home, that's $7,200 in closing costs that you as the buyer have to pay because the seller doesn't have to. In a buyer's market, the seller is much more willing to cover that $7,200 in closing costs. So remember that number, $7,200, that's to cover the closing costs. That's with an interest rate, let's say at 7%. In a seller's market, where the interest rate was 5%, that monthly payment would be around $300 less. So if you take $300 a month and you multiply that by two years, 24 months, that equals $7,200. My point is, Right now, we're shifting into a buyer's market. As a buyer, you're much more likely to get the seller to cover your closing costs. Even though the interest rates are a little bit higher, you're realizing that $7,200 uh, savings upfront at closing immediately. And then with the assumption, uh, industry experts are all claiming that the interest rates are going to go back down. So if you buy a house right now, $300,000, at 7%, even though the monthly payment is 300 bucks higher, you just realize that full $7,200 in savings at closing because the seller covered all of your closing costs. If the interest rates drop, and we're all confident that they will, if they and you refinance your home within two years, not only have you realized the $7,200 in savings from having the seller cover your closing costs, you're gonna realize an additional savings over the life of the loan after you reduce your interest rate through a refinance from 7% to potentially 5% or 4.5%. So think about that. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have questions, you can always give me a call or visit me at terryroberts.com. Hope you have a great day.